Watson needs to watch his goal. Watson needs to watch his goal. Kentucky needs to see it. Kentucky needs to see it. Kentucky needs to see it. What's up guys, welcome back to another Top 25 Breakdown. Today we have number 12, Kentucky, who had a very surprising year last year going 10-3. Surprise everybody. 10 and 3. Uh, team, they dude. had really good wins against Mississippi State, South Carolina, uh, lost a close one to Texas A&M, mm -hmm. and then they beat Missouri in a tight one, 15-14. A very good game. Yeah. Uh, they needed a miracle to win that one, but, and then they put out a really good win in the Citrus Bowl too, against a, a Talented, talented Penn State team. A very talented Penn State team. Uh, looking at what they returned, they returned some pretty good bodies. Uh, quarterback Terry Wilson, Lynn uh, Bowden Jr., Asim Rose, uh, Josh Ali, uh, Justin Rigg, Cash Daniel, also Drake Jackson, Logan Stenberg, and Landon Young. And uh, they also bring back Jamar, Jamar Boogie Watson, uh, Devontae Robinson, Quentin Bohanna, TJ Carter, Josh Pascal, and Brandon Nichols, a Juco transfer. Nice. Okay, so looking at their strengths, running the ball is going to be huge for them. Kentucky ran for 100 yards nine times last year, and they went 9-0. When they ran under 100 yards, uh, which was four times, they lost three of them. They needed a miracle to beat Missouri. Uh, and I think, they, I think they'll be able to do that. They'll be able to run the ball very well, or, or I say very, or fairly efficient, efficiently with the seam rows. Uh, going to be like the go-ahead starter on this team. Yeah, 71 attempts for 442 yards. That's a over a six, a six yards average. A carry with five touchdowns to his name. That's, that's, I say that's very beneficial to the team when you, when each time that you, you feed him the ball, he's gonna get, he's gonna get more than half the yards you need to get to the first down. So I think um, they're gonna get over their 100, their 100 yards each game, especially with the Seam Rose and probably and company with uh, with the rest of the young guys coming behind them. Right, and that offensive line, even though it lost three people, they do return uh, three guys that got a lot of playing time. I think they're gonna be huge, especially in that. Another strength I would say is linebacker Cash Daniel. Mm -hmm. He should be the anchor for that defense. He has a lot of range and he's very consistent. Oh yeah, and he can get behind the line. Yeah. Eighty four like, total tackles. Yeah, and he had seven and a half tackles for loss and eighty four total stops. So he's he's going to be a very huge guy, and he, obviously mm -hmm. he uh, he was around the football like every play. He could gen he's not going to generate a whole lot of sacks, but he's going to get a lot of pressure. Yeah, and you'll be complimented with uh, Jamar or uh, Jamar Boogie Watson. I think everybody knows him as Boogie. Uh, he had, he had 24 total tackles, 14 solos, five tackle losses, and five sacks by himself. I mean, they, I think both of them the do there's going to be like a dynamic duo here, both at the linebacker position. Uh, which I think they're going to play off very well with each other. And then one of my strengths that I that I've seen is going to be the key uh, that the key contributors on the D line are going to be all uh, going to be returning. So that's uh, contributors like Quentin Bohan and TJ Carter and Josh Pascal. I, I know I knew uh, Josh Pascal is coming back from a, uh, a an injury. I took him out for most of the 2018 season, uh, if not all. Uh, so I, I would expect this team to improve this 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 young D line to improve and most likely be the anchor on the defensive side of the ball. I think, and I think one last strength that it's kind of important to know is that they're going to have leadership in both Terry uh, Terry Wilson and Cash Daniels. Uh, I guess they would be the 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 quarterbacks of uh, their respective side of the balls. Cash Daniels being a linebacker, Terry Wilson being the quarterback. Uh, I think they have great leadership in both of those guys. Uh, I think they're going to be able to rally their their, their teammates uh, to get these wins that they're very capable of doing. Yeah. They do have some concerns, obviously losing Benny Snell and Josh Allen, who were huge last year for them. Uh, but And also on the secondary, they lost four starters. All of them. But they do have some hope uh, with junior uh, Devontae Robinson, who adds more size to that position, mm -hmm. so the, uh, to the secondary position, which I think it was safety that he's getting mm -hmm. moved to. 42 total tackles to him. Three, total ta three tackle for losses, four pass deflections. They also have junior Jordan Griffin, uh, who should be one of the top five tacklers on the team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definitely tough to replace an entire secondary after losing everybody that that, that contributed re meaningful reps and meaningful uh, uh, playing time. Uh, but like you said, they do they do have young uh, young guys, they do have talent, they do have depth. Uh, they also will become accompanied with Brandon Eccles, a Juco transfer, who uh, you should expect to be to gain or uh, earn a, the starting role at cornerback. Another concern would be uh, receivers. Uh, it's not that there isn't talent there, it's just yeah. that they're, they're not deep threats. And I think that's what we saw last year is the, the down the field passing was basically non-existent. Mm -hmm. It's not that Terry Wilson can't throw the ball down the field, it's just that that's not part of the Kentucky mm -hmm. offense. They, but they do have a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, they do have like uh, a star among them with Lynn Bowden uh, with 67 receptions, 744 yards and five touches by himself. He's gonna be the key guy, uh, uh, the key receiver 
uh, on this Kentucky team. This is gonna it's gonna be a a Terry Wilson and um, Lynn Bowden uh, type of uh, connection that's gonna happen. You're gonna hear that connection all throughout the season. I think uh, there's, gonna, there's a lot of pressure on Lynn Bowden to carry this receive this young receiving core and to uh, help out to bail out really Terry Wilson when it comes to crunch time. Yeah. Looking at their 2019 schedule, a lot of people are kind of questioning what they can go, especially because last year it was very surprising on how they went 10 and wins, mm -hmm. uh, which was really baffling on how they went to Very 10 good wins. for a, a Kentucky team. Yeah. Very good for a Kentucky team, but looking at their 2019 schedule, they have Toledo, Eastern Michigan, and Florida. Just the first three games are going to be fairly easy games. They, beat, they did beat Florida sure. last year. At the Swamp. At the Swamp. So this year it will be at home. It will be a 7 p.m. kickoff time, uh, which should kind of benefit Kentucky. Yeah. Also, uh, then they go on the road at Mississippi State, at South Carolina, and then have a bye. Those two games will be tough, especially on the road, yep. especially a team that could struggle on the road. Yeah. Uh, and then after the bye, they go to Arkansas, at Georgia, Missouri. Georgia and Missouri are going to be some of the tougher teams that they play this season. Yeah. And then after that, another bye, then Tennessee, at Vanderbilt, UT Martin, and Louisville. So those last four games are very winnable. and. They benefit them because they there's only one away game and that's just Vanderbilt. And they they, they can they can really uh, if they have a if they have a tough time in between in the middle of their of their of their season with Mississippi State, South Carolina, Georgia, and Missouri, they can really clean up uh, clean up the end of the season with with very good wins against Tennessee, Vanderbilt, UT Martin, and Louisville. Exactly. So what do you think worst case scenario looking at the schedule? Worst case scenario, I'm thinking this is a seven and five team. It it's just you know a worst case you know this is where Bob Stoops can't can't get his team to rally like they did last year or Terry Wilson doesn't have a great year as he did last year it, it, and you know like we mentioned before they do lose out on Benny Snell but they do lose out on the on the key, key contributor on the offense Benny Snell but they do have a seam rose ready to go uh, in the wings but they do but they do lose a lot on defense that it's going to be tough for them to stop teams from scoring on them uh, so I'm thinking this is going to be a seven at worst case scenario this is a seven and five team uh, it's still good enough to get themselves to a bowl my worst case scenario would be close to yours. I think my I think they go six and six. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think the schedule is very easy. They only have four away games, which helps them out. But I do think that they'll struggle, especially to run the ball or also pass the ball. Right. So like if that's non-existent, it's going to be hard for the defense to kind of bail the offense out every time. Yep. Especially playing in the SEC is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think that at six and six seems uh, what it could happen for a, a team that lost a lot of production line from last year. And I mean, and still, it's still. It's good enough to get themselves to a bowl. This team's still good enough to get themselves to the bowl, but not quite back to ten and three like they did last year. Right. So, what do you most likely think will happen? Most likely, I'm thinking it's eight and four. Uh, they do have. So, I'm I'm really relying on putting that weight on Terry Wilson. I'm kind of putting a lot of weight and burden on him, where I think that he's he's so good enough. He's good enough where I think he's gonna will this team to eight wins, and I think this team is is definitely worth getting eight wins. So I, I'm I, I'm putting a lot of weight on, on Terry Wilson. I'm going to put some weight on Cash Daniels. I think both those two leaders are going to be able to will this team uh, to where they, they should be. And eight wins is deserving. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll agree with you. I do think that they have some tough games, especially four of those on the road. If they do lose all four of those, I think they do go eight and four, which mm -hmm. I, that's what my most likely thing is. Right. Uh, but I, they also could drop games to, I would say, a Missouri that's coming to Kentucky, so that'll be very interesting to watch. Very exciting to watch Kelly Bryant. Exactly, especially in the SEC now. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you think best case scenario would be? Best case scenario, I think this team goes back to 9-3 in the regular season. I think they kind of, they might, they might secure their 10th win in a, in a bowl game. Uh, you know, th that 9-3 record, this is only if, if everybody's in the same book, on the same page, all the cogs are spinning all together, and they lose, they're definitely losing the Georgia game. I'm sorry, to, I hate to say it, they're definitely going to lose that Georgia game. I think they're going to lose the Missouri game, and they're probably going to lose one uh, one of the games against Mississippi State or, or South Carolina, I, I, cause, because both of them are away games, and I'm thinking that, you, that you're right, that they're not, a, they might not be a good team on the road. Yeah, so those back-to-back -back away games are going to be tough. Uh, my best case scenario for them is also nine and three. I think that they're very good. They're very talented. They have a lot of depth. They have the right coach right now. Uh, a lot of their culture there is right now is kind of shifting to a more winning kind of culture. And mm -hmm. if this goes uh, to ten wins, this could be a very good start for building more like traditional winning there, oh, especially yeah. at Kentucky. So yeah. that'll be very interesting. Ho uh, yeah, hopefully it'll pull you know uh, high caliber recruits over it and keep the winning tradition going. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they can't recruit, but it's just like it would bring in more four stars, more five stars, possibly. You. So, yeah. But uh, thanks, guys, for watching this video. If you guys liked it, give us a thumbs up. Comment below. Tell us what you think of Kentucky at 
2019, see if they can get back to 10 wins. Yeah. Uh, we're very interested in what you guys think about that. Uh, subscribe because it helps us out. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.